Hey guys. Hey, awkward. <laughs> How are you? Hey, uh, so um, as we left off last time talking about the Mongols, um, we wanted to kind of start back off, pick back up here um, about how the Mongols um, empire after um, thank, you. thank you, thank you. Yeah, 1227, remember that, it's coming up. Uh, the empire is going to split into four khanates and stick around for a little while. Not very long, though. The Mongol Empire does not last very long. It, it In the four different places here, all kind of have their own duration. Um, but it's it's not the thousand years of the Roman Empire or anything like that. So, Just a couple hundred years. Yeah, at best, you know. So, um, so first off, I wanted to start, and I know you guys have some maps in that. And I think this does a, a very good job of, of kind of showing the, the spread of the Mongol Empire over the years. So it starts out with just Genghis Khan's huge spread over his, like in 20 years, what he does. And then goes on to kind of show the different uh, Khanates that come out after it. So this is like 13 years. Oh, there's 20 years. And this is now 20 to 27 is his death. And so that is how much area he has conquered um, during his lifetime. And then it's his like grandkids in that. And then and it's, yeah, it's his grandkids, his sons. They kind of continue his expansion and keeps going. It's just bigger. Like, look at this. Like, can you imagine when you're like 35, 40 years old, you're not going to ever have this much land? Seriously. Sharp is just super jealous. He wishes that he, right now, controlled this much land. You know how many soccer fields you could have out there? <laughs> how cool would that be? Um, and so this is the end of just the unified Mongol Empire. Again, though, it is going to split up into four parts, but they are all going to be closely related and work together. Yeah, they work together under the Great Khan in the China area. He's like the big guy. And then they've got all the all the other Khanates who are Khans who just follow along what he says. So, as you can see, there are another four Khanates here, all right? So, show your map. This, like Ms. Perrin said, this is the Great Khan. This is the Kublai Khan. Uh, that is his grandson. That is his grandson that is running. What is going to be known as the Yuan Dynasty in China. All right. Um, Dagate, Golden Horde, okay. Ilkhanate. Now, so let's get back to the point. We only have a couple more slides here with us. It's going to be super fun and quick. So one of the most important things that they do after they get into that huge Mongol Empire and then split up into some pretty nice centralized peaceful Khanates is they help revitalize the Silk Road. We've been talking about the Silk Road for forever because the Silk Road's been going on for forever. So throughout, they have this centralized government and anybody who walks through the Silk Road now can just go through it without worrying that some nomad tribe is going to come in and steal all their stuff. Who's going to mess with the Mongols? Exactly. Who's going to mess with people like Genghis Khan? Nobody. And the funny part was, was that the reason that the Silk Roads were always dangerous was for the idea of... People like Genghis Khan. People like Genghis Khan and the Zanu and all of that that were in northern China, all of these like nomadic people that were responsible for getting goods across. They also were ones that kind of terrorized the Silk Road. So now... Those people are in charge of the Silk Road. And so people came in and you've got all these luxury goods in China. They're silk, they're porcelain, they're pottery, they're pictures going all the way through the Silk Road out into the Middle East, into those like Islamic empires that are out there, even all the way out into the dark ages of Western Europe. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. So all those people, they're starting to get these this nice cultural flowing, and that expands into what we're going to go on 
into next week. But you could, as I remember in John Green's episode, you could walk through the Silk Road with a gold plate on your head and not worry about somebody stealing that gold plate. That's how simple it was. So, and lastly, not only are goods free, but people move freely throughout the empire, um, ideas, religions, and again, I think the impact of the Mongols uh, over world history is so much more than we can understand the guys like the Mongols. The Mongols were essential to taking all of that area, that land mass, when you think about what is here, and people moving from Europe all the way to Asia, freely, safely, uh, ideas, religions, technology, government practices, everything was able to move freely and safely there. And that is such a lasting, lasting impact um, for the world, much more than just the fact that he was one bad mojo, <laughs> mojo, yeah, mojo. All right. But then, of course, all good things have a bad side, right? And one of the things that the Mongols did spread, if you go back to the PowerPoint there and that little bug right there, one of the things that they did spread, though, was the Black Plague. It originated in China, and since there were so many people moving around, so many goods moving around, the Black Plague also moved around, and that was a, that thing that devastated Western Europe, devastated everybody along this line. So, I mean, they had some great parts, and then this is also something that they have in their history as well. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> All right. Adios. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.